So, a lot of things to see step up. I mean, on the other side, I mentioned kind of like a little a little walk and talk that we did this morning. His is, is uh, it feels like he's dropped off in terms of his impact. It's been Brolin at the top. It's been Jimmy at the top for Miles. I want to see that old school exertion who's going to be pushing and taking space and making creative and dynamic plays and wreaking havoc on the defenses. We'll see that when we switch sides into the second half for now and execute at the B-bomb site. Yeah, three plies over here for Miles to try and defend it. Boomich with the first headshot. Good night, Brolin. Not the start of the pistol he would have hoped for, but Jimmy fighting back from the barrels. A second kill locked in until he runs out of ammo, and we're going back and forth, and there's Zershin out from short side. It's going to be the kill to draw them into the clutch. Perfecto alone in this 1v2, and we know what he can do in clutches. We've seen Perfecto win a few of these in his career, and he's got himself into the 1v1 now up against Zershin. He has got time. He has to get that bomb, and he has utility too. Zershin sees that and goes forward for the fight, and that is the impact straight away. No, 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 he says. Yeah. Yeah, appears in the pistol round with them duallys. Triple kill, and he's getting a little bit hyped as well. Takes the aggressive push when he sees the smoke coming out. I think a lot of pro players right now are just like, we enjoy being the aggressor in CS2. Good initial hold from Jimmy as well, and uh, unfortunately for Cloud9, this gets stopped. Almost a clutch for Perfecto, but those duallys land a nice little headshot. One to nothing. Hopefully Torji can be enough of a distraction. Enough of a prospect to keep Cloud9 moving forward. Now they do like to move between the bomb sites, and oh, that's a good peek. A hard clear from Boomich. Berlin had taken a deeper off angle, so Boomich is easily able to pick that one up, but blinded and dinked, and there's no escape. Yeah, sure. It takes Boomich out. Look like Brolin actually got hit by the Molotov on the other side of the wall there, which actually forced him just slightly out of position, and then the kill came through. Exertion up short. It's 89. It's a good position for him. He tries to get the up on him by swinging into the fire. And it does work out. He goes back for seconds, and this time on Hobbit, it's Perfecto and Electronic taking over this beef bomb site. Shuei left alone. 1v3 for him, and he does as well as he could, but it ends up being the first round for Cloud9. I think Mouse thought Cloud9 was way more dedicated and way deeper into that bomb site when they actually pounce up that ramp. They, uh. Electronic's got a timer on this, so he's got to keep moving forward. Doesn't realize it just yet. Already the defense is starting to shift. Exertion, not even going to check short. That door opening, though. Oh, he realizes that's so frustrating. The door is closed, has to go and open it. And here comes Axel down the stairway, looking right at him. Exertion still wins that fight. Boomer hits the headshot on the defensive player. Shuei in nine seconds left. Limited time. They've got to start getting that bomb down now. And that's exactly what happens. Perfecto punches those digits in. And Torzi and Exertion, while well, they are certainly in a weak position here, especially with this learn from Electronic in behind, sweeps up Torzi, and Exertion would like to save that AK-47 now. Based on the start of this half, though, we won't be seeing the, the Torzi ult for a few rounds at least here, and that was definitely the main talking point, and this AK, it's not going to go into this round either. Boomich hunts it down, triple overall for him, and you know, the, you know if Torzi gets that ult out, then the game obviously changes, but was a player not so long ago. Exertion getting into short. An aggressive maneuver here for Exertion, and it hasn't worked out. Hobbit just holding for it. Axol with a great shot from Connector. Brolin was tunnel vision to try and get that trick kill, and ends up getting caught by Axol. So Cloud9 in this gun round already have two players up. Yeah, taking a big risk, Brolin. Trying to slide out and take a peek through door. Good shot from Axol. And now, I, this is so long for Cloud9 to get a chill. They're going to wait, look for the follow up peaks. They'll trade them all off. Shui and Jimmy go down. It's just Torji. Yeah, and he's staying committed to this. He's staying over towards this B-bomb side, but it, it feels like it's just destined to go the other way. Torji's going to hear these footsteps. Short will be Molotov. Not as deep as they'd like, but Plant should be just fine. Yeah, I think they realized the only sort of blind spot that Torji could be in is short, and Boomich plants on the other side of that pillar and peeks him. A big boom was certainly making a lot of noise throughout the, the early stages of the play-in, right? They had a, an upset go against them earlier on in the competition, but they had a lot of domestic matchups against their countrymen in this event, and that definitely fired them up. Boomich was probably the loudest player with Donk inside of the Hall of Heroes. Yeah, I mean, that, that third map he had against uh, VP was, was quite nice. Hobbit's another player next to Electronic who's had a very good, very good Katowice so far. He really started to step up. Nice shot here from Torji. That's Electronic down, and now they know they're going up against the AWP. They know where it is, and Boomich is accelerating towards this A bomb side, trying to take as much space as he can, and his teammate Perfecto is with him. Groove mentioned they did some research and they looked into this and they looked into this matchup and very much prepared for Maus and that's a very convincing call. You spot the opera, you get the kill in bathrooms and no hesitation from C9. Pushed aggressively towards the eight bomb site, confident the route would be clear. Now they've got themselves a post plant. A little bit light on utility, plenty of nades and molotovs and smoke for Maus. Let's see if they can pull this off. 
Perfecto. Up on top of the truck, could peek out, and he has cover immediately to go back in and out with headshots. It is Cloud9 dominating Damn. Malice at the start of the day, and Electronic is fired up. Six rounds on the T side, and this isn't really a competitive at the moment. Very rough and unconvincing play in stage. What a sequence from Perfecto, just chilling on truck. Hard to clear out. No Molotov at his feet, no nades to his position, and it's a triple kill. And that's everything taken from Maus. The first round they get the op is round eight. And maybe Brolin can start to activate a flank around the back of B. And that is exactly where Cloud9 play is going. Here they come. Axel at the front, taken out by Yimfat. And this is going to stall out Cloud9 and, and really allow this flank to start going for Brolin. Yeah, at least for the moment. And this might be one of the few hiccups Cloud9's encountered in this T side so far. We'll see how they kind of adjust around it. They've been able to, you know, Boomwich has provided them with so many opening kills. Flank from Brolin gets spotted. Awkward fight for Electronic. And now it's a two man advantage. Yeah, I thought Electronic was about to take Brolin out there, predicting that flank going back for it. But as you said, timing just made it an awkward fight. And Brolin's just locking down this area of the map now. Ooh. Perfecto trying to come up the ladder. Timing works against Brolin. Yeah, but Perfecto doesn't know that, so he's being cautious to look for the fallback. And if Perfecto doesn't find him, Brolin's going to have a backstab. Oh, they line up. Almost doubled. Hobbit's brought very low. And 30 seconds left in a 2v4. Torsi just holding bathrooms. You've got so much money if you're Cloud9, you definitely go for this. Take weapons away is the goal, and obviously with the AWP in the hands of Torji taking on Perfecto, it's it's kind of over from there. Hobbit doesn't want to progress forward without a teammate. This half is all about recovery. And a lot of it to do. And the issue is because they have been dominated so long in this half, <laughs> there's so much money available for Cloud9, so they can buy. Hiding inside the smoke with Boomich. They're going to bust right through. This time, not spread whatsoever. Good nade. Chunks him down, but they're coming through regardless. Oh, yep. Big headshot from Electronic. Follow-up in. Exertion goes down. And now Shuei just chilling back. It's going to be a lineup of multiple oh, players Lord. holding down, but only one kill out of it. Probably should have got a multi-kill there. Shuei's under so much pressure, so much scrutiny, and still gets a double. Oh, wow. Okay, that's much better for Miles. They have woken up, and there's fist bumps all around. Yeah, that's my IGL. Well done. And Mauser gathering info with that. Torsi's got a connector locked down. So Cloud9 start to become the field very suffocated. In terms of the map control they've got available, that door gets blown open. Torsi locks that kill in. Yimfat follows up and Exertion swings back to Monster. Cloud9 getting outmatched now towards the end of this first half. Yeah, that, that third timeout did wonders, apparently. It just took all three, but they've arrived inside the server, thankfully. And that story of recovery, Mouse have carved themselves out enough for the last three rounds of the first half. We'll see if they can come all the way back. Zaxal's the only player over here in defense. Yeah, and I'm wondering how long it takes for someone to shift back because they haven't seen or heard anything on the map quite yet. Boomich is now rotating. It might be a little bit late. Axel's going to need to deliver something early. Gets gooshed up, has to fall back. That means all five Cloud9 players are going to be stuck behind utility for this retake. They do have a smoke and they do have a kit. Yeah, that could be absolutely key for this. Exertion, though, we know his aggression. We know his confidence when he gets going here and he's pushed through bank behind that smoke. Axel is taken out. Now we're looking at this 4v5, a retake scenario for Cloud9 becomes a lot more difficult despite having the utility. And here they go with that utility being set up. Boomich sends the flash over, smoke's available to Electronic, take it down as he tries to round that corner. Yinfat, only one. Torsi has to step up alongside Shuei, and it's done, it's six. And now Miles are just one round away from tying up versus Cloud9. Yeah, here comes that monster play. There was a smoke up and there was A-stairs just outside of the bomb site, cutting off information for the Cloud9 defense. Perhaps trying to elude the fact that Mouse might be heavy outside there, but instead it's this B-pop and Shuei and Yimfak coming in with multiple kills. They can get that bomb down. Shuei looking to lock it in behind the cover. And Boomich is not getting the shots on target here. Not quite getting the wall bangs in position. And Axel is going to have to lead the way if they want to go for this retake. Neither one of them have kits, so it'll have to be quick. But if the M4 can't produce anything, the op's going to have to bail out. Oh, so they're giving the op to Axel instead. Oh, what? Axel landed that one, and Shuey's down to eight health. He's so close as well. Yimfa nearly going down. Axel put his X-ray glasses on. Well, that could have been something special, and it's not.
So that's the reality of the situation here. It's Mounds into the lead. And this is after that huge streak in the first half from Cloud9, where we were saying this game's getting out of hand. Cloud9 looking fantastic. We were yeah. talking about that big win versus Virtus Pro. Perhaps they'll replicate that versus Mouse. But they just woke up after that third timeout, and it's been round after round after round since. Yeah, they thankfully cooled them off Ooh. at the end of that first half, and they've carried it over into their T side. But as you mentioned, three timeouts used just to get Mouse awake into the game. Bubich is going to be the player that is heavily tested in this round, though, with Hobbit, who can get that early warning system going. With the 5-7, he's hoping when this smoke fades away, he can get this kill. He spots the head. Exertion couldn't see him. A quick switch to the AK-47, and no kill for Hobbit on the follow-up. A minute left in this round. 4v4, and Bubich is in the bathrooms. And you know what that means. The big boom has his magic stick, and it's a kill on Shuaikon. And 4v3, kill for Boomich, and no problem. He's scared off Maus. They don't want to go into the toilets when Boomich is hanging around. It's never safe. And then this is even worse. Double setup and short. Electronic with the Deagle. Ooh. Axel's going to peek on contact. Nice and clean. That's a bit of a banana skin for Maus to slip up on, isn't it? They're up against pretty low weapons. You have the AWP in the bathrooms. And you still lose against some of these weaker and, pistols. And the important thing, too, is because Hobbit and, and Boomich each get a kill in that round at the front of bathrooms, you funnel Mouse to adjust on the map and swing towards the B bomb site where you have that short stack waiting. So without the success of Boomich and Hobbit, they don't exit out this door. They might just continue marching forward, but instead they have to go back into the waiting arms of Electronic and Exile. The Glock sets up the distraction to offset the crosshair of Axile to set up the AK to come on in. It's a smart play there for Maus to get rid of one of the rifles on this A defense. And now Bumich feels the pressure, decides to drop back, and not quite as good as Axile on those all Brawlbank lineups. Oh. And Hobbit swings in with Electronic. The Glock has got another kill. And suddenly with a bomb plant and a 2v3 with weapons in hand, there's an opportunity here for Maus to take this one away. No way. Oh, Shui can do this. Blocked oh, off by back. the Molotov. Exertion inside of the bathrooms takes damage too. Shui's held back, but there's still time on this. They don't fade away. He'll still have time to peek and deny the deep view. Come off it. They come off it. And now they have to get back to it. Shui dies at long. And Mal's make that competitive. They bring it so close. But Cloud9 just about stay afloat. Yeah, plenty of time for that defuse. But getting off, if, if, if Shui wins that next fight, all of a sudden it's a really awkward 1v1. 10 to 8, Cloud9 recover. That's a lot of pressure and a lot of danger that Mal was able to put in this round just with a kill on Axile out towards long. I think Boomich, when he changes his angle, doesn't realize how closely they've moved up to the bomb site. He almost gets caught off guard. Very fortunate Cloud9 to get away with that one. 10 to 8. Close, but no cigar. They've got to come back and fight this one. And Electronic, he's getting into that monster smoke. He's taking a risk in this round. We haven't seen this yet from Cloud9. Perfecto and Electronic doubled up and fallen. Oh, the smoke fades away. He's gone. He's eradicated. And now with a minute and 20 seconds left, Maus have to play the rest of this round. Two players down thanks to Axel's push-up through connector. We talked about Brolin today and what we could expect from him, wanting to see a good performance. He has struggled. He has struggled so much. 4 and 14. And this round is done. Everyone on Mouse seems to be struggling right now. This, this Cloud9 team, once they've kind of uh, gotten a good feel for this CT side, they've been so disruptive in terms of taking away everything Mouse want to do. With how Cloud9 are playing today, warmed up coming into the out of the play and rather into the group stage, it seems to be paying off right now for Cloud9. Good shot from Exertion. Need a lot more than that, though. 18 seconds live. Boomich impales him with an AWP and a second on the swing out. Cloud9 do have an offer for this map, it seems. Yeah, hitting some solid shots, Boomich. 11 to 8. Does not get into position, but he does. And he's pushed up towards party, and he's going to rain on their parade. It's one for Axel so far. Yimfat hits the deck, and Axel just using smokes as defensive utility to keep himself alive. Remember, Boomich is with him, so he can cover off that flank side. And that's why Axel seems so confident and comfortable just looking at this smoke. And Shuei's coming through it. And to his demise. It's now the Tech-9 pulled out for Axel instead of that reload. He's just handling business, and he is really feeling it in map one today. It's great to see Axel up here getting these numbers and fragging out. Yeah, he's got a bit of attitude to him. Torji's stuck over in the playground. I mean, this is the amount of kills he had in that quadruple overtime earlier on in the competition, so good to see. 
But again, it's like I mean, even even in this round, I know it's uh, it's it's like Tech Nines, and it's a little bit it's a low buy for Mao, so they're not coming in with AK-47s. But they had an idea of what they wanted to execute, even with those Tech Nines, right? Boost it up. It's a good position here for him. And Axel in connector. Yipfat's gonna go around the corner and clear it. He's gonna hard clear that, and Axel dishes out damage, but receives a headshot, so he's gone. And Mao is for the first time in a while have a comfortable advantage in the round. Boomich, oh, oh, that would have been a beautiful one to have. Burns. Steps back into the Molotov from oh. Shui, and Torji builds on it. Taken down eventually. It's Electronic and Hobbit to defend this B-bomb site, and Electronic's doing it well. No way. Electronic is just devastating them now. A second kill, and he's looking towards Connector. In fact, peak Electronic with the headshot. My god, Electronic. What a turnaround in this round. 55 seconds left. Mal's are heading back to the A-bomb site, and they so desperately need this just to stay alive on map one. And they can make an educated guess about, you know, the A-bomb site being relatively clear because it's Hobbit over there. So Utility's going to come down. Plant's going to go down. And Electronic's coming. The Bond villain himself. Making his way up those steps. Shui and Exertion, two sharp players. They've got to deal with this. They've got two smokes for the bomb, so if they can, even if you don't get a kill, you smoke the bomb, you toss out a Molotov, and you get going with it. Yeah, and there's none of those pieces of utility available here for Malice to combat that, so smoke goes down onto the bomb. That's going to create pressure for the two post plant players of Shui and Exertion. Electronic brings down his fourth of the round, and nearly all five, but the defuse was stuck all along. It's Cloud9 with map one. It's overpass going their way. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. All good, it's in the con. The smoke doesn't go out towards the window and Perfecto is in behind that connector smoke. Zertion, oof. Peace. Oof. This is a split towards the A-bomb set as well. They're committed to it and you have Electronic at A-ramp already. You have Boomich looking at Palace. This is gonna be a tough angle. Oh, this is looking a little dicey for Malz, especially with the man down. Yimfat coming up through a window. Torsi's with him. Nice shot from Torsi. He'll take that one. And there he is, Cloud9's latest Alper, Boomich. Interesting. So Electronic's pushing now. So this is this is kind of this is kind of weird. If he wraps all the way around towards middle, it's Boomich. Oh, they're genius. Ooh, hoo, hoo. He's so smart. He's got the big brain moves, but Shuei's watching for it. So much brain power on display here, but it's all about the shots now. And Electronic splatters Shuei's brain all over the floor, and now he's looking for a little bit more. Electronic swings and is dead to Brolan. Yeah, but do you continue with the tactic if you're Mouse? They've spotted the bomb in Palace, like everyone can commit. And Whoa. yeah, they're moving forward. Jimmy's down in Cubby, Axile dueling. They know one's at ramp now, needs to be a win somewhere. And Jimmy's got a trade. He does indeed. Axel gets traded out one for one. Hobbit has to step up in his stead. And now Torsi with a 1v2 ahead of him. It's a good shot on that P250 up first. And the molly goes down to default, so Torchy can't plant there, but he knows exactly where his next victim is. He fakes the plant, he comes off it, and Hobbit knows that now. He knows he's in a fight, and Torchy's got the clutch! There he is, the little Hungarian hero. Yeah, P250 doing some work. Most of the way through, but some nice shots from Torchy, as we see. A couple of nice headshots and cleaning Hobbit up, not losing track of him on the fake plant. It's one to nothing. But this is how Overpass started, so you know. Let's everybody stay regional. So plenty of time for things to go wrong. Oh my Ooh. goodness, Boomich. The young up and coming players forever. Well, we're up and coming into this A bomb site. Palace Pop. Boomich is the only one, and boy does he get overran. Good trade from Electronic, but he's got to hold on until reinforcements arrive. Good spray oh. control to grab Shuhei as well. And ooh, that's a pretty decent stop of this execute. Yeah, good flash up too here from Electronic. It's going to hold them back. Axel's got that headshot exertions down, and so far, not so good for Malice, but those kills are going to come back and put them in a winnable position once again. 2v2, but Bomb is down just outside Palace. I, and they've got to go back and get that. I don't know if they realize it, Cloud9, if the bomb is there. Axel, surely he would, he about would to find see it out. on the radar. Maybe not, but he's looking for Torji. Knife out, not ready for the fight. It's all in Jim Pat. Yeah, and he's a long way off. He's so far away, in fact. And fortunate for him, there's a full minute left on this clock. So Jim Pat's got to run all the way through T-spawn. But he's got quite the clutch ahead of him. Yeah, I, the problem, the thing that sucks the most is there's no way the internal clock of Cloud9 doesn't doesn't trigger, and they're already watching for both their flanks. Perfecto's got Palace smoked off. Axel can just drop a Molotov on spot, and then they can... Oh! No! 
Oh, he can't. He's dropped on spot. Yimfat comes in with that headshot, and now it's up against Perfecto. There's time here for Yimfat, and he is so good oh. in these situations. <laughs> Hits the headshot, but it doesn't bring him down. Perfecto has to win the 1v1. That damn Galil is what he's saying right now. A dink and not the cleanup after the fact. A nice attempt. That's a disgusting shot on Exile. Woo. But in a grander sense, Malice is going to be frustrated. You do a palace pop like this, you get that first kill inside the bomb site, and it feels like you're just poised for success. That's usually the kill that gets these, these kind of waterfalls hung up, but they, they find it and still can't win out at the end of the day. In the hands of Torzi. I think this is the first time I've personally seen the Krieg in the event so far. So let's see what Torzi can do with it. When do they go? Because Exile and Hobbit are already pushing B-Halls. They're already shrinking this map. Electronics pushing middle, and he's going to grab a kill. Now they know. It's all on Boomage up from above. Oh, and he, oh. He on the ladder, not as much as you'd like. How is he still alive? And finally, he's brought down Perfecto. Para headshots. You love to see that. And it's now Cloud9 up 2-2. Two to two. And it's so hard, again, like this team is still really, oh, good flash, good yeah. flash, great peek, easy double kill. Yeah, you gotta like those if you're electronic. Not if you're mouse. Definitely not if you're mouse. And it doesn't get much better for them until this shot from Shuei. Electronic goes back for third, is maybe a little too greedy. And you end up going down, so... Down to three players now, Mouse. Look how confident the Cloud Nine's being. They're just they're oh, aggressively taking fights. Yeah, this is the second time he's found this like lurk kill towards the A bomb site. He's hitting some nice timings on Boomich, who's probably getting increasingly frustrated. The bomb and Torji are on the other side of the map over in B Halls, though. So I think they're gonna. Oh, what? he's got another one. Ooh, that's an early little angle, and I love that from Brolin. That's pulled a kill in, and now it might start to pull another player away. And sure, I... the bomb is coming back through the underpass. There's a better weapon on the ground too. The electronic left earlier, and you can get that into the hands of Torsi. So this round now becomes very doable for Maus at the 36 second mark. Oh, so risky. Exile's got to go back and consider the B bomb site, though. So that was the pressure on Catwalk. I actually thought coming back to A was the wrong idea. But Exile gets pulled back, thinking this is going to be a fake. Even smokes Catwalk off. Ugh, so Mal's a have play. a plan. If you if you drop this one, this is a knockout punch if you can't win this round as Mal's. Oh, but Hobbit is so sharp today. Another headshot comes in. And that's Brolin gone without issue. A 2v2. And remember, Hobbit has a little bit of utility, but Axel's got the kit. And Torchy's come out window. Here's that drop down. Axel thought it was safe. Thought he could reload, but he is mistaken. And now Hobbit does not have a kit. And the chances of winning this round are very slim indeed. Time is ticking on, and Hobbit realizes that. And it has allowed that economy to now grow. They're going to have a lot more cash available, and if they get this kill on Hobbit, that would have been a little annoying. Lose the AK-47, and they do eventually drop that out of his hands. A lot of congratulations going around the mouse camp. This is Brolin again opening things up and building upon it this time. Wow. <laughs> I haven't seen that angle used in a while. Really good stuff from Brolin. Exertion going out middle. We talked about him like he some of these solo plays, and he is dead before he even gets around the corner. And now Miles have to accelerate into this B bomb site. At the front of the attack is Yim Fat, and what a shot flying out. Hobbit couldn't do anything there. He is gone completely destroyed. And Torzi throwing the bomb on over, giving it to someone else because he feels like he's got a chance to take down a player crossing over, and that's exactly what happens. Smoke doesn't bloom in time, and Electronic gets picked out. Yeah, this round's toast. A good dink on the gym pad, but you're, you're not getting out of that market. Yeah, you're gonna bail out. I, I don't even know how that entrance works. They call that the boomer killer. I, I'm just confused. It's mind blowing. <laughs> Perhaps it'll make more sense when we see it from his perspective. Maybe like he stopped for a millisecond on the platform to give himself accuracy and lands the shot, but. I don't think so. I think I think you're just making things up now. You're trying to justify it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what happens, isn't it? That's, I, that's life. That, taking that kind of a kill as Hobbit is, that'll make you feel old. All right, Axel. Yep. Let me save this up for ah, no, not allowed. Brolin takes him out, and Mouths are very much locked in now at the start of Mirage. A better start to the game. Here we go. Nope, yeah, nope, was, that was BS, Jason. There was no stopping. No. There was not a single stop. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Oh, I feel for Hobbit. 
and hope he has a better time. It's always about timing on these like jump spots. Like when do you actually see him? He saw him pretty early. Defensive yep. utility deployed into the bomb site. He goes. Yeah, he gets back further into the side. Electronic trying to help from short. Axile was there too, but no kills coming in yet for Cloud9. Is there any kills to be had? Hobbit steps up finally. Perfecto chimes in with the AWP two on that CT side, and Hobbit is dancing with death. He's got a good angle here, but couldn't spot Brolin through the whispers of the smoke. And Torsi's got that flank. Boomix thinks he's got the play, but he's mistaken. Torsi's locked that frag in, and that's the bomb. And look it's going back through the underpass. And look at Shui. He's, he's, he's checkmate. This is great. Brolin's just going to stick around at this B bomb site and hide and be a nuisance. They might think he's disappeared. But how do you get past Shui? You have to go CT spawn. Torji's going to get a bomb plant front of the site. He can even fall all the way back towards Khan. Oh, free kill for Hobbit. Peaks out just as Brolin looks away. But absolutely now, Miles are in a very solid position to try and close this one out. Torsi has a deep angle towards CT and Perfecto's peak. Sick flashbang. That's going to get Torsi off the angle. And Shue is still inside of jungle. And Torsi surely gets a chance again to land one. But the shadow, the baiting out of the shot again. Torsi's under pressure. Perfecto trying to get around the back. But Shue on the double headshot. What a play in this round from Shue. Yeah, Torsi could never get a comfortable angle after his flashed off CT spawn. But that is a nice round from Shue. Of the defense, he's just falling apart all the time. Oh, and here's this continuation. Oh, hold the phone. They're going to walk right Ooh. through this smoke. Boomich, yeah, he's had a rough time, but he does connect to this kill. Oh, Ooh, good follow-up. Dink and Axile cleans it up. Yeah, and now Perfecto up on the stairway. Has got the AWP ready to go. 50 seconds left in this round, and Maus are creeping ever closer to this A bomb site. They're limited for choice. They have to go here. Can a brother get a flashbang to turn this corner? Nope. He's dead. Boomich peeks out, catches Shuei in the open. Zershin leaps out of Palace. It's an important kill, but many more need to come through. And leaping over the stairway. What a shot from Torsi. Oh my god, he nearly had a chance to bring down more. But a 7-5. Mouse still hold the lead. They've come back in. They look locked in. And let's see if we can force map three. Yeah, it's got to be a fake. Here we go. Up the ramp. Hobbit and Boomich making progress. Oh, everyone's biting. Everyone's biting. Oh, Torzi. Good first kill. Could have got the second. Did a lot of damage, but Brolin was the player to finish that off. And here comes that maneuver into the B bomb site for Cloud9. They put the bomb down. Miles started with the right amount of players on this side of the map. And here comes Shue through short, looking to try and get in behind. Axel is just chilling, waiting to stop them from getting out of the market. But the jump out from Yimfat just comes through. He's got some mad moves here, Yimfat, and he's got another headshot. It's just Perfecto left, and that defuse is already being stuck around the corner. Yimfat looking to lock that in, and he will do it. Yeah, Torsi's fired up with that one. And Yimfat, again, just he's finding some serious impact. Yeah, but that's not bad when you consider there's an AK-47 on the board in the hands of Electronic. You get one Deagle kill, forces the defense to spread a little bit. I say that, but no one's sticking around with the A-bomb site. Two players coming up to Khan. Good trade from Torji, but it's still working out in the favor. A two-on-two. Cloud9's going to be very happy with this so far. I can't believe Electronic got that headshot. It looked like he was going to go down without a single kill, but Electronic's so damn good. He manages one. Hope it close up to that smoke. Now he's the AK bearer. He's got himself a position too that could take exertion out of this round because he's always aggressive and sometimes it works against him. Bomb is down. Yimfat up against Hobbit in the clutch. Yimfat has a better weapon now and he's so confident. He takes every fight. He takes every swing and he wins it against Hobbit. Yeah, he's feeling it. He's just making decisions so fast and sticking to it and doing it 110%. If he's given the opportunity, he can make this half devastating for Cloud9. And shuei has got aggressive into the underpass. He's not going to continue his run. He just wants to position himself here early. And Brolin is down. A straight up fight with a rifle between Boomich and Brolin. There's Cloud9 that come out on top of that first fight, but the second is evened out. Yeah, but Shui doesn't have an escape route. <laughs> oh, but he's going forward. Yeah, but he's, there's no way. He had two behind him. He had Boomich coming up as well. And I mean, because of his teammate going down in window, didn't feel like he could escape through middle. So he was just a sacrificial lamb. And three players are about to walk towards Exertion, and he doesn't have any help from that A-bomb side. That smoke will make sure of that. So he's locked into a fight here, and he's got to win it, and he won't. Boomich is so sharp on that headshot, and now it's Yimfat. He has been so incredible so far on this map, but this round will be just a step too far, and that's exactly what it is. Electronic with the headshot, and that's the round. Torsi has to save the AWP on the other side of the map. They're going to trade Jimmy no matter what. 
So Torji's got to save the op, but Cloud9's on the hunt. Yeah, they are. <laughs> oh uh, my! Boomich damn. is damn sharp in this round. That's three overall, and that is huge because you take that op out of Torji's hands. I don't. Yeah, it's such a big gap that you need such a big player to fill it. Oh, and brawling it that just yet. Zershin with a nice headshot. Boomich is gone. That's an AK-47, and Mao's are making these last two rounds of pistols a little exciting. Maybe a step away from this one being scary, but... As long as it's not a complete disaster, because Cloud9 have, have Exile coming from no, their pass. And, no, no. Oh god, it's starting to look like a complete disaster. Oh, it definitely is. Disaster setting in. Cloud9, do they have the response? Do they have it in them to make this one happen? And Perfecto's got to double out towards default, but it's all over just like that. Full USPs, and Mouse pick it up. Shout out to Exertion. The one kill in middle to scavenge the AK-47, and they build upon it gut punch for Cloud9 that seemed like they were just marching forward to looking like they were going to be able to tie things up or just, just kind of cut away at this lead and boy does that get turned around. A great round for Exertion, three kills overall and a massive speed bump for Cloud9. Everyone's kind of playing it passive and conservative, nobody wants to give up a mistake, nobody wants to give up a kill on an aggressive play. Over the edge of the smoke, that's beautiful for Shuey. It really is, and that's gonna work out. Hobbit didn't have a chance in hell to pick up that fight, and Shuei's come back into the ladder room for a second of this round. Eventually, it's overrun by Perfecto, but it's Axel jumping out of the apartments, trying to get some control here for Cloud9. Needs some kills to go his way, though, and that might just be the fight, but Yimfat picks it up and puts Perfecto into the 1v3, one that he will not even take the first step in. 11 rounds from ours, they stop that round from going Cloud9's way, and this really starts to look like Ancient. Full USP round and looking like they're just going to run the scoreboard after that to close out this map. You know what's better than a full USP round? A full Glock round. Yeah. Can't remember the last time I've seen one of those one. Can't remember the last time I've even just seen one of those. Yeah, they don't happen very often at all. And that's why. Uh, because Yimfat just mauls them. That's four kills. Axile deciding, nope, you're not getting the ace. You're not getting the satisfaction. No, running to the side of the map. Run towards Roland instead, and that's what'll happen. So 12 rounds for Maus, map point. Ancient is the next map. It's a pretty nice call, though, into this defense. It's a very passive one. Nobody's in the bomb site. Brolin and Exertion, they'll have decisions to make when Utility streams over on how they decide to be aggressive and how they try and do a little bit of damage. They're exiting Palace right now. Cloud9 going into this. It's Brolin with the first kill, but Hobbit is quick to answer back. Cloud9 need to make some ground up here, though, so a little bit of a lull in the action. He takes some space with that gap, I thought. Torzi was going to lock that kill in. Absolutely, but the plant goes forward. That grenade might be good, and it is. It sinks Hobbit, not before he takes a kill, though. And we're still even on this retake attempt. Oh, I think Yibby's got more to say in this round. Yeah, he's, he's waiting brewing. for his moment. He's been so incredible on Mirage. It's got to be a flank from Shuei first, though. Perfecto's got eyes on it, and he wins the fight. Now it might be time to back away. Yeah, Yimfat, unfortunately, he may have had more in this round, but his teammates certainly don't. And because of that, he can't get into a competitive position, and now he's trapped inside a connector. He uses that smoke to get away, or at least attempt to get away, but Axar will chase after him, and it's an eighth round as Cloud9 are on life support. I'm not so much worried about Torji as I'm worried as I'm rapping behind Shuei. He's so focused on window. If they came up ladder, if any of them investigated ladder room, it'd be all over all the boost. The boost ruins him. Shuei does get his one, but the B-bomb site is available until who else but Jimmy arrives. Good swing from Boomich. They've got to win a disadvantage post plant. And that plant is going to go in. Electronic watches back to short. Shuei trying to retake from short side. It isn't going to happen for him. Brolin's patient, waiting for an overextension. Electronic just walks right into him. So it's all on Boomich to keep them in Mirage. Has he got a big clutch in him? He looks out short. Here's those steps, and he cannot do it. He cannot get it done. Maus will take a Mirage. They will force Ancient in this series. They didn't start the day honed in, but they've warmed up. They've woken up, Jason. And now Ancient, it lies in the wings.
opening game of the IM Katowice group stage for both of these teams. It's been Yimfat who's performing very well and consistently. 39 kills on the two maps so far, and he's going to be under some pressure here early. Exertion helps alleviate it, and then they all step up and piss around's done. Yeah, that's going to be nice and easy, nice and clean for Maus to kick things off. And Brilliant piece. I can't imagine doing trivia in a second language. Oh, yeah. Uh, mostly because I don't speak a second language, so I've only got the one. Shuey's going to get behind him. Oh, you love that. Oh, you love it if you're Shuey. Yeah, four kill, quad kill, plenty of money, big smile on his face. It's all going well. Yeah, he loves that. You can see the big smile on his face. That will continue, hopefully, into this next round. Cloud nine. Could be another devastating play from Shuei, this time against premium weapons, but Perfecto, he's considering this. He's starting to think about a flank, but it's about whether or not he looks the right place at the right time, and he will. He'll turn back for that headshot on Shuei, and Maos now have to retake. I think Shuei might have misplayed that a little bit too fast. Let your teammates who are lining up for this retake take some of the attention, take the brunt of the attack, and you slide in a little bit late. Instead, they've got to go in 4v5 or save. Yeah, here comes Electronic around long side, and he is going to take that fight and win it. Boomich is with him, and Exertion and Torch to left in a two versus three. It's doable, but Hobbit is going to take that chance away. Nice shots to close it, and it is the first gun round going Cloud9's way, as it has many times already. And it has. It's over towards this B side of the map now. And it's got a good angle on that B stars. And that is setting up this crossfire inside of Cave. It's allowing for this to stay in position. Boomich is clearing it out, though. It's just a single kill. Shuei takes him out eventually. And that smoke is blown open for a moment. But it goes up just as they cross over. And they'll put that bomb down. Important kill for Hobbit 2 to lock that in against the in-game leader of Maus. And a 3v3 post plan. It's about exertion coming through Cave. Can he win this fight versus Hobbit? If he can, that it opens up again for Maus. If he doesn't, then Cloud9 are favored for this one. And the timing for Hobbit to look away puts Cloud9 under a hell of a lot of pressure. And Axel stuck on default, fighting out left and right, dealing a lot of damage, but eventually overwhelmed himself. And it's just perfecto. Nice headshot on that first. And he's not buying it. He is not buying it at all, Jimmy. You're going up against one of the coolest clusters in the game. And perfecto, he does not fall for it. He'll pick it up. And Cloud9 tie. Dang, two to two. Exertion coming in on the flank to clear out Hobbit. That was massive. And the op can't get involved at any point during that. Torji didn't have an impact on the execute. He was standing out in the open trying to take one shot. He missed it. And at the end, he's just locked out of any impact throughout the entirety of this round. And Cloud9 sent Maus back to pistols. Yeah, it's USPs though, Jason. It's five USPs. And an eight. Uh, it started off with a kill for Mouse. Second kill in from the USP. Hobbit looking to clean it up, but he won't. Oh my god. Yimfat on the USP has littered the floor, littered the battlefield with spoils of war. AK-47s to pick up, and Boomich on recovery mode. It can't happen again, and it is happening again. Five USPs in back-to-back -back maps. Cloud9 losing to the default pistols. Perfecto is once again asked to clutch, and this one's more difficult. The opponents left on the other side of the server are sure damaged goods, but he's got to get all the way around, pick that bomb up again, and walk into a den of three players holding AK-47s. Tell you what, this is... Someone's going to be pissed off. Someone on Cloud9 is going to be pissed off. I think everybody will be watching this. In fact, he will go down. Perfecto now spotted. They know where he's coming from. Five seconds left in this one. And they have the bomb. They know they have the bomb. They know the bomb's all the way back at T-spawn. In Mirage, it happened at like a swing a crucial moment. Crucial point, yeah. yeah. This happens early. At least here, if you're, I guess if you're ever going to lose one of these rounds, it's early enough that Cloud9 can have a, a round to recover. But after losing a map, going into this, and losing another five USP round, that was certainly a conversation they had between maps. And man, those emotions come flooding back quick. Yeah, it's Yimfat yet again, the player that gets a sick double tap for the USP that really sets it all up. He also got that nade kill, so it was a 3k for him. With just a default pistol, and, and that's what can happen when you go too early into the elbow and you get crunched like that by a low buy, and, and that's gonna be something that's very frustrating to a player. Shoei swing out, Flash sets it up, he goes down, nice shot from Axel. Perhaps Cloud9 can answer back with a weaker purchase. It wasn't that weak. They got, they got some rifles on board, too. Oh, good find from Hobbit as he slides out. They've channeled the anger. They've used it to make them stronger. 
Exertion grabs one, but Torji with a critical miss, and Cloud9's in the driver's seat. Yeah, what a response back here from Cloud9. You lose the five USPs, but as soon as you find the next round, you start to forget about it. You're back on track, and, and devastating, especially for Torji. Yeah, fat under pressure now, trying to hold on to the AK. Oh, he does. He went for the swing last second there. He was hoping for another kill. Which can be such a, a great advantage to have for CTs in a post-plant situation, not allowing over terrorists to overtake that. Yeah. Making it a one-front battle on the retake. Good shot from Brill and a good utility as well, but Hobbit's going to come right through. It's clean. It's uh, Shuei, though, behind. This just nips at the back of Electronic. Second kill on that CZ, and now it's just down to Perfecto in a clutch and a 1v4. This game is absolutely back and forth. It's chaos right now, and Perfecto is down to 16 health. Double nade, dunks him out of the round. There's nothing he can do to compete there. Oh, frustrating times here for Cloud9. They can't get a foothold on this T side. Coated in a sea of flames and don't let anybody out of it. Desertion gets close even, and this can be a very pivotal position because there's three players on the other side and they've taken damage. Desertion hears them running past. He can get in behind them. He can end the round right now. He's got so many players in front of him. And Exertion mows them down a triple kill. And that's it. That's the round. All she wrote for Cloud9 just like that. That is such a sick play from Exertion. Yeah, start adding that on top of losing to five USPs, and you're going to have a very frustrated Cloud9 who feel like they haven't even really been able to play the game. Overpass looked great, but ever since Mal's arrived on map two, Cloud9 has struggled. Nice, boys. Full, full focus, the money part. Just sheer confusion with the craziness. But Cloud9 trying to go back to B. It's Axel to take that first kill of the round. Shui makes quick work of the response, but he's overrun. He's overwhelmed, and that Tech9 has burst through the B bomb site. Perfecto's got to cross with the bomb, though. There is still a little bit of a danger. Oh, oh he's huddling in. There's the cross. Good dink. Zershin can't be aggressive. Yeah, it's massive danger right now. Axel coming back down. He catches them looking the wrong way. It's just one on Exertion. Torchy's coming in on that rotation, and he's the player with Yimfat that need to pull this off. In fact, making no secret about his position. He's inside of the cave. He's down close to Cobbit, but his head was tucked down and covered off by that wood. But Torsi he gets rid of him. There it is. And now there's utility. He can smoke that bomb. And there's flashes. There's Yimfat. And there's so much chance here. As Torsi goes around the corner, Yimfat's gone. And I think he realizes now that his teammate's out of there. He has to bail out. He'll take that AWP under the next one. And Cloud9 respond with a B play. Applying pressure to that B bomb site, keeping it simple. Here it is from Exile. Swinging through the smoke. Roland wasn't ready. Shuei can only get the one. Donut smoking. Yimfat playing from that tall box. He's tucked in behind it. Exertion's setting up flashes for his peak, but maybe just a little bit too early. But Yimfat's still able to transition in behind this big box, and he's looking for a big round, looking for shots out, but it's nothing. Not a single kill comes to that initial hold, and Torji sprints back into Donut to get behind the cover of the smoke. Yeah, once again, Torji's up, not even allowed to have impact here. He had one oh. shot, one shot at it, and now he's going to have a tough time getting out. Electronic already wrapping around him. He reads it, he reads it, but not for long enough. Doesn't stick around, and it's time to bail out of your mouths. Absolutely time to bail out. Brolin doesn't have anywhere to go. Oh, Brolin, you gotta feel so bad for him. The timing as he just moves his crosshair away, Axel walks right into it. Cloud9 has turned ruthless ever since that exertion round. Uh, just every round since then has been a big F U to this mouse defense. They've been hitting. Oh, the no. this, this is awkward. Oh, God. It doesn't look pretty. It does not look pretty. They're running out of ammo, they're just fumbling through the magazines. Shue is somehow still alive. Oh my god, he yeah. fights on, he defends, and Shuey got the ace trying to hold on to his weapon. <laughs> A garbage time ace. Look, we, we take that. This one, set piece towards A. And once again now, back to the A bomb site. Extremity's the name of the game for Cloud9. Oh, Jim Fat, they haven't checked him, and usually so good in those kind of positions, but it's just damage in this round for Jim Fat. He hasn't had to face pressure like that this whole game. He probably would have liked to have had a 5-7. Maybe bought the Deagle expecting if he gets into a fight, it's going to be a distance, it's going to be some safety, and just fooled, caught off guard by the rush. And this is going to be Cloud9 tying things up at six.
They're trying to come back into this one. Mouse, last round of this half. Actually, hold the phone. There's smokes. There's three smokes and two kits. So they're going to toss that utility out, but Buick's removing the numbers. It's certainly not going to help matters here for Mouse. Exertion trying to double up, and it won't happen. A ruthless finish to the half for Cloud9 as they tie it up 6-6. Six to six. Last half of this series after the break. And now they get a play from the defensive side. And it's so obvious to see they're going for a B play here. Plenty of utility available for Shue and Torzi. And Hobbit, he is not going to hold water in this one. The defense breaks open immediately. Zershin applies pressure onto a second player. Bumic comes back, close lines to Zershin, but has to deal with multiple different sides. And there's just too many bullets peppering him from so many different positions. And Maus comes storming into the B-bomb side. But it's Exertion who cracks that open. Two entry kills, 16 and 8 for Exertion in the map. We wanted him. We got him here on Ancient. Shui's right there with him. Shockingly enough, the captain, 16 and 8 as well. Yeah, and he's had a good series overall, right? He's had a few maps throughout this series where he's been very good and gets some big, impactful moments in keep going for it and maintain the control. So maybe you've got to look somewhere else and it's maybe that's that B ramp. And it certainly looks like it. Here's Torzi. Got that Galil, but quick switched. I'm not expecting the second player. Yeah, I thought he had a little bit more time to get away. One for one, he sees the aggression. They know there's a third player as well there due to the utility that's thrown. So they have a little bit of information mouths to work with, but they don't realize the follow-up push coming from Cave. Electronic and Perfecto gonna double up and say, if you want to escape back to the middle, we're gonna challenge everything. Nice, easy double for Electronic. Two quick headshots. Now it's Exertion and Yimfat left in a 2v4. But having four players there, you, you have to be dynamic. You have to be kind of probing and moving forward. You can't just sit back on your haunches and wait. Otherwise, Miles can outmaneuver you. Yeah, speaking of probing, here they go with three down the B ramp. They're taking the fight to the final two players of Maus. And Bumic will celebrate that round win. He's not getting that at all. And Torch is going to keep walking through red. Around the back of Electronic, who turns back in. Just about, about spotted the victim, and there's Exertion with the follow-up headshot on the Deagle. Brolin filters in, and suddenly, just like that, Mouse have turned this round on its head. And they might even scare Cloud9 off from this one. And that that might be, uh, I mean, we've seen Electronica frustrated a couple times in this game, and it's obviously going to happen. That might, This might be another round that causes him to get a little bit angry, because Agzal was safe and Donut that whole round looking towards middle. Yeah, we get to see this again, so Perfecto. Exiting Donut, getting that kill, but this is the frag from Torzi that really unlocks the round. And then, obviously, six shots. This should have been Cloud Nines. It really should have, but Mouse have a lot of firepower, and they got them back into it. Yeah, one little, perhaps, uh, missed, missed uh, rotation, blown rotation. A little bit of a mistake, I think, from Exile. Uh, just getting a little jumpy. Bye for Cloud9. They will have a couple of concessions, and that is limited utility and an MP9. But Mouse are going for a quick call out of the timeout into the next round. They're already through to the safe off site. Good flashes up, and Axel on the double kill. Exertion and Brolin stopped at the door. And Electronics turn, but he is taken out by Yimmy. Axel's doing so much for Cloud9 in this one. He's kept him in it, he's kept it competitive. And now Hobbit has arrived in the rotation over. It's just Shuei left alone in a 1v2. And although Mouse had the up, they had the element of surprise. He has to clutch it in a 1v2 and he slips out. There's the player spotted towards Big Box. That's Hobbit, who's got some cover. And they know exactly where Shui is, so they time a double peak. And that's a quick round. Quick to start, quick to finish. And it's Cloud9 that come out. Yeah, that just came in at the perfect moment. I don't, I, I don't know if Mouse, it looked like they almost got like team flash. Maybe it was an Axile flash as well. But uh, he's he just comes out of here and everyone's blind. Exertion's trying to run back into cover, desperate. Grabs a second kill on top of it. And that buys time for Hobbit to slide into the default boxes. He's all over the show. Wherever you go, he'll be there. And Mao's run it back. A fast play this time on the B-bomb side. Same result. This time even more dominant in favor of Cloud9. And these pistols don't break through. Yeah, Exile gets up to that ledge real quick to just shave off one player before they hit. Goes down afterwards. Now Boomic is going to have to hold on to Cave. Electronic, who else? Ready to swing through the smoke on contact. Boomit, oh yeah, you love these kind of positions when you got an MP9. The little Velociraptor in his hand, and he rips apart his opponent. It's all tied up, and Cloud9 have found a second win, and potentially that'll be the team moving forward to face against Gamer Legion. Oh, that's a nice nade. A lot of damage, and should be softened up enough now for Hobbit, but Brolin breaks through the Glocks. 
are rocking the world of the Cloud9 defense, and the bomb plant is coming through, but Boomich is going to handle that, and his teammate of Electronic denies the plant. I got a little worried in that first kill came I out. did, I, I did was kind of well. just like, I was just kidding, guys. I don't want you to lose. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> don't actually do this. Yeah, uh, it's not cool. Timeout from Groove for this ramp push. Electronic and Hobbit Perfecto with flashbang in hand as well, ready to toss it out. So Boomich is dropping further back too. He's going to watch red in case they've lost mid control on that bottom ramp push is coming in and it's devastating. Electronic and Hobbit get three kills between them and this has got to be it. Now Mouse are starting to get very frustrated. This is three rounds now where they just haven't got involved. They haven't competed and Cloud9 are dominating them towards the end of this half. And whoever came up with this concept and philosophy for this B defense deserves, uh, deserves a lot of credit uh, on the Cloud9 side. This, this is twice now this strategy has worked perfect, and they've ran it exactly the same the both times. I mean, I mean, it looks like it has to be Groove based on the, the body language in that timeout, right? He's instructing Boomage. And they haven't really needed to have to worry about that eventuality. 11 to 9. Wow. That's a sticky situation right there. Who has that stance over towards Red Room? He only has a Deagle, unfortunately. And Electronic's taking position inside of A-Man 2. So he's pushing for information. He's getting space at the moment. But here comes Perfecto. He's gone in for a double dip. And this time, he's got another headshot. Torsi finishes him off. Exertion coming to Red Room. Yin Fat fighting out of cave. And it's a kill on Hobbit that's locked it in. That's going to be a kill that puts Mouse ahead on the player count. Exertion knocks Electronic down to the ground. And Axel has to clutch this one alone. He doesn't have it in him. Let's and Mouse will pick it up. How does Mouse win? this round from a 4v5. Oh, man. Well, we see them struggle when they've gone faster pace. This one was great. Finally, there's only so many times you can pull off this ramp push before Mouse is just like, we're keeping eyeballs on it all the time. Uh, every stage of the run. And it's not the normal execution. It didn't have the double door smoke. It didn't have the flashbang. Improvised, I think, by Cloud9. It ends up in a calamity. Goes against them for the first time. Run boost fails as well, which means Mouse has standing towards ledge and Shuhei. He was so focused down below. Oh, and look at that. There's no fallback. There's no retreat for Axel. He's caught. He's ripped open. And now a 4v3 as Mouse looks to push forward to 11 rounds. There's even team kills in all the chaos. And towards he goes down. They line up for Boomage, but it's only two. And Brolin will stand on five health. A measly five health up against Hobbit, who's on A. Five health in a rough game in the office to ask out of Brolin to win this 1v1. It's going to be down to timing on this, and he looks like he's hoping he can catch Hobbit rotating through middle. It's not happening quite yet. He's got all the utility he could want. Here's the rotation, and now he knows exactly what's coming. However, it's relatively obvious for the plant spot, it feels. Yeah, well, will Hobbit check it? If he can just fly around the corner with a USP and clear that corner, if he even spams down through that box. But Hobbit's going to stick it. Brolin isn't peeking. Brolin has to go around the corner, has to stop this defuse, and he doesn't do it. Bomb defused. Hobbit gets it. And a heartbreak for Brolin in the 1v1. That's a deep exhale as well. That's a hard bluff to call with only 5 HP. But man, Hobbit just slides a little bit to the side. It takes longer for Brolin to get the angle. This was such a nice round for Mouse up to this point. The Molotov doesn't stop them from killing Perfecto, but it does force them back towards middle where they get mowed down. Huge win from Hobbit and Cloud9 on series point. And they cannot believe it. They absolutely cannot believe they've got away with that. That defuse stick from Hobbit. Which would be a disaster against two MP9s. Oh, and there's a deep smoke too, so that MP9 can get even closer, which makes it more deadly. 25 seconds, you're right. Mouse have to go through it. It's not a favorable fight, but Brolin explodes with revenge, and it's a sick double kill on that B entry. Mouse are not done yet. This will be 11 rounds. We've got to go the distance in regulation. One more round, and we've got OT. There's nobody happier in this studio than Brolin right now. Redemption with that double kill coming right back out of a tough loss clutch. That's some composure. And for having such a rough series, having impact at this moment is massive. Worth its weight. What a transfer. It looks so good for Cloud9. That final seconds forced through a smoke into MP9s. Boomich slides in with Hobbit in tandem. Axel brought down. What a shot from Exertion. Not missing that one. Brolin just has to be patient. Mouse have all the time in the world, and currently they see Zershin making his way through that A bomb site. He's calling to his teammates shortly. It looks pretty clear right here. Hobbit and Boomich with a couple of kills, but they're answered back by Mouse. 
And this is the play. Electronic has to step up, and with that 5-7, he brings death to Shuei, and he's locked towards the end at heaven. That bomb is dropped in middle, needed exertion to come in from red, and that is exactly what oh, he does. Can he catch him? He might be able to catch him. This peak. Oh, he doesn't go around the corner. Oh, oh, that doesn't have the weapon, but can switch to the AK-47 now. And they're both in there. Both three any players and Malice are inside of the red room, and they smoke it out. Now they can go anywhere. Perfecto just has to take a gamble and oh. guess where they're going, and he's made the right call. He's gone towards the B-bomb site. Torzi's alone. If he denies this, there's no more time. Perfecto gets it done and just needs to hide. Exertion's running in with it. And Perfecto is just hiding in the middle of the oh, side. Oh. Search him with a headshot. I cannot oh, believe it. Okay. One second in it. And overtime. Cloud9 can't believe it at all. They can't believe their eyes. Overtime in the final second of the round. What the hell was that finish, Jason? That's unreal. Perfecto plays that just about perfectly. It's not even a gamble. He's saying, you saw me fight in middle. You assume I'm going to just jump over to Donut and go to the A bomb site. He gets such a lead. And Exertion is so fortunate. Yeah. Can you believe that? Even the other players can't believe it. Brolin gets close. Axel can throw a flashbang for him if he wants to turn the corner. Oh, big boy kill from Brolin. There's the flash. This is electronic wrapping behind it. Brolin's aware. He's had enough after the lost clutch. Some stellar rounds down the stretch, and Mao's with a two-man advantage. Perfecto is going to be way more dedicated to A. Axel's over in Donut. They're hoping this smoke and flash is enough of a distraction, and it is, but not for long. Utility out of A main. Axile's got to hold on initially. There's one. Tries to step back and can't make it. Perfecto comes right through, and that's desperate. Yeah, it doesn't work out here for Cloud9, and that's the bomb down here for Maus. Hobbit going through and dies as well. 13-12. From a last second headshot to the first round of overtime. This will test Cloud9's mentality. Axel is defending mid, and Electronics with him. They're about to have a fight coming out of Elbow. That smoke won't last forever. And here they come through it. Flash is good. Electronic holds down. It's a double. He'll turn back, tries to get a third, and eventually it's removed. Roland comes back. Another kill from him. And really, he is really coming to life over the last few rounds here. Shuei and Torsi, 2v3 ahead of them here for Maus. And Boomich is not sitting back. He's getting active, and he's pushing through Cave. That smoke starts to fade away. And that's the bomb carrier. If he drops this, oh, it is so difficult now for Torsi. It's so hard with how much presence Cloud9 have had in Cave throughout this entire game. Constant pushes, there's the spam. Hobbit's gonna find the final kill, 13-13. Timeout worked. Cloud9 stabilize. Axel shut them down previous. Can he do it this time? He drops into the donut instead of standing and fighting. He knows he has some help with him, but Axel gets nothing. Electronic goes down as well. Sick entries from the Malice players. And Hobbit has to get back and try and recover this one. It's an important headshot, but it's only one step closer, and they need many more. This is a nice punish for Malz on the defense cloud 9 has been running throughout this game. Is such a heavy lean towards B, towards middle as well. Axel alone is the defender in Donut. You can really get a wide angle on him, and they do it again. Hanging around, and that kill from Boomich does take Yimfat out of contention. So once again, even numbers for this retake attempt. Cloud9 opens themselves up a chance to get back into it. Was he hides in the big box, Brolin's beside him. Smokes go in, last second utility. Boomich comes in with a kill. Now that defuse being stuck in all the chaos. It's all Cloud9 inside of the smoke. The defuse pulled off and Cloud9 let out a sign of celebration. Yeah, that's that's two. That's two close defuses down the stretch in the rounds, down the stretch of this match. 14-13. Mouse has had success with those A hits on this T side at times, getting the entries, but the post plant has been so rough to hold on to, and you have to imagine that's going to be a note they're making to have a conversation about. A couple of these post plants a little bit cleaner, and they might be winning this game. Well, he's got vision. He's got a line of sight deep in towards A main, and they jump across him. He's yet to pull that trigger, yet to leave his mark. And when he does pull the trigger, it doesn't matter. Yimfat will step up in his stead. A double as Exertion swings out with Brolin. Cloud9 fall at the hands of Maus. It's two things. It's the mid control from Maus that allowed them to get numbers at that eight bomb site at the perfect moment. Especially with all the utility Cloud9 still have available. And now there's no secret. 
They're finishing A. Smoke goes down towards CT. Molotov to Temple. Electronic pushing into the donut. Oh, they line up. And Yimfak gets the miracle double that throws Maus into a 4v2. And now suddenly they're completely favored to win this and come back in for this retake. Perfecto would need this kill instantly. And Axile in the meantime, how has he done that? From a rifle to the sniper, Axile on the triple. He was an offer all along. Triple kill from Axile on the retake. Let's run those back. Maybe we did find the new Cloud9 offer. Maybe he's just in this team all along. Man, I mean, the, 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 the miss clear and donut is so massive. Not even anyone really, uh, Boomer trying to trade it off. But here we go, one. Swings out a little bit wider. Shui trying to take advantage of the position at Big Box, but this is just perfect. Each and every shot lands for Exile. Steps up, and Cloud9 have yet another chance to close this out. I cannot believe they brought that back, and look at the stress of the heading day, staff. Heading day, heading day. A play coming in, Electronics at the front. Yimfat this time from Donut, does answer with the kill. Oh my god, Jimmy, a triple. And that has set up his team with an absolute blinder of a chance to go ahead and force us into another overtime. He has done it surely here. Axile is in the middle of the side, and he will fall. We go again, and it's young Yimfat who steps up when he's needed most. Back-to-back -back rounds as well. This one more emphatically, and oh, Oh man, Electronic, all he can do is really shrug and put on a put on a smile. This is one hell of a game. <laughs> this is so hard to call who is going to pick this one up. Nice. Miracle nice. moments happening for both teams that you think is going to decide the game and then suddenly there's another one. And it's looking for his first target. A little too early and he goes again. Ill-advised. And he falls to Axile. He never expected that wider off angle from Axile. A uh, beautiful shot to shut him down before he can react. That one's even better, though. Oh, my god. Boomich just Boomich. laid Shui to rest. Roland's there trying to make up for it, but he's canceled out by a flashbang. And you can tell by how fidgety he is. He has to worry about two positions. He's done well so far. Boomich has gone down. And this is a much better CT hold from Brolin than we've seen in regulation. That smoke at ramp is doing a lot of work. It's held Perfecto back. Without numbers, he doesn't want to step through. And that's given Brolin the safety to look elsewhere, but it's about to fade. Yeah, but he's repositioned. Brolin's now thinking about that ramp play instead of Cave. He thinks the work he's done has held them back in Cave for the time being. And he's got another one. Can you believe this turnaround for Brolin? Brolin's back, baby. Here's four already. He might even get all five. He's damn close, but Hobbit stops that from happening. And now Hobbit's thinking about a clutch. Now he's thinking about a hero play, but that's denied. Not even the bomb plant. That's a tough round from Brolin as well. I, that's a that's actually one of the best rounds that that we've seen from anyone in the server in this game, considering. And he'll have Perfecto with Electronic to deal with. Oh. The first one is no problem. Yeah, that's a great shot from Torji. Electronic is going to be frustrated. He has to sit back and watch the rest of his teammates try and unravel this round. 20 seconds left. Exertion with a follow-up kill for Maus. Boomich has gone. Perfecto trying to do his best. The Cloud9 need to put that bomb down, and they're no closer to doing so. Bomb is loose. 10 seconds left. Axel fighting. Has to plant. Now that takes him out of the fight and forces Perfecto to defend him. And Axel now they know he can't have gone far, so they jump around the corner. Yimfat takes him out, and Maus are pushing forward. They're taking the lead, and they're extending upon it. Let's not count Cloud9 out just yet, because they have shown incredible tenacity they need in one. this game. They need one in this half of overtime. Well, let's see if they can get that one. Perfecto loses that initial fight. Fortunately, he had Boomich beside him, and that trade is through. He didn't think that anyone would be standing inside that Molotov. I don't think it went deep enough to block Shui. But look so. at Yimfat. In this late stage of the game, he's pushing into a main. He's taking an advanced position. He's not alone. He's got exertion, but Electronic clears it. That experience to check for the second player and followed up by Axile. That's the A site completely under wraps. Damn. Well, the bomb's coming in a little bit late, but Torji's going to be smoked off with the AWP. He's going to have to go towards Temple. Brolin as well, just sliding over now. So bomb plant is in. And a desperate 2v4 retake. Dink is there. Brolin. Domes, Hobbit, but they're held back, and Maus are not getting any ground. Torsi would need a kill, and needs to get out of Temple, and he's done that. He's now swinging with a 5-7, dead to Hobbit, now dead to right. Brolin coming through Temple, he's committed to it, might as well go for it, but Cloud9 will sentence him to death. It is that one round, and Cloud9 need to stay competitive, and this game once again reopens.
Cloud9's just, just calling it a little bit. They're playing with no information in middle. No one's even spotting it. No one's even really considering it. Electronics just spotting to see if players get into Donut. But this whole time, someone could be wrapping around the beep offsite. And Cloud9 oh. just don't care. Setup works perfectly. Yeah. Umic and Perfecto with one apiece. It works out absolutely perfectly. And now Malus make their way through. Final 25 seconds of this round. Hobbit plays at the first pyramid with Perfecto in a crossfire. That's the denial of the bomb plan. This is Malice falling apart, and it's just Torzi, and he is now gone too. Once again, we are tied up in this series, yet to see who is coming out on top. They're taking significant damage. Play is so low. A player down two. Roland attempts to peek out a cave. It will not work. And he'll smoke out short instead. Brolin decides to drop on back, predicting a play to come his way. And that's exactly what Cloud9 offer up. Boomich and Hobbit, they come out on top. And now Cloud9 are in pole position to get to map and series point. 4v2, but the beat from Hobbit and the second shot from Torzi. It's sick. And now Yimfat has a 1v2 in front of him. And this young Finn does not care about the clutch. He feels no pressure. He wins these for fun. And the shadow spotted, surely. In fact, trying to draw that fight, but now they've doubled up, and he won't be able to get it. Oh, look what it means to Boomich as well. That one's a feel-good victory, 18-17. Getting themselves a matchup versus Gamer Legion, and sending Maus down to a battle against Monty. Such a good early win from Electronic in middle as well. All right, third chance. How many is it going to take? Cloud9 have shown incredible resilience with how stubborn Maus has been, refusing to go away. And this time, Exertion gets the opening. That's when Shuhei pounces two for two in mid. 3v3 set up nice and early. Cloud9 a few steps away from closing out this series, but Maus want to battle back again. The first time around, it was a last second headshot from Exertion to stop them from being sent out of the series. And, and Cloud9 really doesn't care about defending this eight bomb site. Not they, at all. Yeah, everyone's gone. And I, and I think at some point, Mao's noticed and realized that because there's been such a lean towards the B bomb site for Cloud9 throughout this whole game. And there's no utility really for this retake, right? They don't have smokes. They have one flash, one Molotov. Cloud9 have got to hit headshots, and they're going into the donut. Brolin's going to take them out. That's a first kill coming in for Mao, second in from Torzi, and we go again. This overtime keeps on refreshing, and we've got plenty more Counter-Strike. I cannot believe Mao's is able to come back in all these rounds. They've, they've won three series points. Perfecto is inside the bomb site at the default pillars, just holding it up at the angle towards ramp. Now, if you're Mao's... That smoke indicates they've fallen back, and Hobbit slides out. Perfect timing. Oh. Can't get away, but damage done. Yeah, that's certainly felt here for Maus. They've got to try and recover this 3v4 now. It has been dismantled and changed up, and Boomich making noise. He's so low on health. Utility being tossed into the cave. And Boomich will not take damage from it, so he can stay there. Electronics rotation over. Shuei was not ready. He was preoccupied about the presence towards Cave, and that opened up a chance for a kill from Electronic. And now Torsi's overwhelmed. Electronic stepping up in this round, and just exertion with a 1v4 ahead of him. He'll go down to Boomich's relocation, and Boomich is happy about that one. Boomich gets the first and the last, but man, Perfecto's relocation is so, so smart. Shuei's just distracted entirely for an extra couple of seconds and tosses it in when utility starts coming over. That was meant to be a collapse between Shuhei and Zershin, and it's just taken away from them. Oh, the spam down. That's a beautiful way to get a kill this late into the game. Brolin spamming through, catching Perfecto, and draws at least one step back. Especially onto the AWP. Boomich slides into the position that spam would hit as well. Axile pushing up in A main is going to keep track of anyone falling all the way back. He's actually posturing like he wants to wrap all the way over. Oh, he's me. going. He's going for it, Jason. He's committing to this. Yeah, but there's a window here. If Malus can make it into Donut before this flank comes in, Axel will at least kept tor uh, catch Torji. You'll, you'll see his direction, and he doesn't get the kill, and now Axel is com completely messed it up at this point because there's no one inside of the A bomb site, and he's giving away what he's doing. He's giving away his move, so they accelerate into the A play. Electronic gets over on time in the rotate to get a kill back, and Cloud9 have got extra players, and those are working very effectively. It's just, just towards you left. They spotted him a little bit earlier in this round. They know he's around the donut somewhere, and they'll get that defuse in shortly. 
Torshi does not have the weapon nor the utility to get out of this one. He's fighting in the donut, but they're giving him chances. They really are giving him chances. And eventually they will overrun him. <laughs> and Agna Groove can take a sigh of relief because he looked like he was on the edge. Yeah, that second kill comes in, you get a little bit worried. And again, Cloud9 this time opening up overtime strong, 20, and 18, 20 to 18. Here comes Exertion. This time he is allowed out of the elbow. And this time he'll elbow his way through mid. Electronic and Perfecto cast aside. And Mao's up two players right from the get go. Boomich is going to try and pull that back. He's detected, but it doesn't matter. He drops towards him. With that kill, the bomb is down too. And Axel uses that chaos as a distraction to move forward. But it's an absolute mess in mid. And the bodies scatter the battlefield. Yeah, it's a brawl. It's like both teams agree that the round would be won and lost at middle because they just kept throwing bodies at the problem the whole time. But now Mao's in the three on one. They can pause on their CT side when they switch. Hobbit going for it. Killing what he can in, but as you mentioned earlier, his position was just too far out, and he won't be able to stop the 19th going against Cloud9. He's up to 31 kills, Hobbit, in this game. Exertion at 32, and look at this job in middle. Almost transfers over, but that's a tough shot for Perfecto to hit with the AWP as you recover. And there's a little bit of a change up. The AWP being one of the aggressors in middle. They were hoping to get him in position to take a pick. And there's so many players on this side of the map, so Maus have a chance to shut this down. Of course, he can't miss though, and he's forced to miss because he has a flash to the face. And now with 25 seconds left, the commitment up the ramp is being stalled out by the fire, so Axel can't join his teammates. And Cloud9 need these kills now. They need to get into the bomb site. And they're doing damage, they force them back. The plant is coming in. Electronic confirms that. And now we're down to a 3v3. Mao is trying to come back in for this retake. They've got an incendiary and a flash to make it happen. That's a huge Molotov out towards long. That buys Boomich so much time. And he's just got eyes on this. He just wants one more kill, but he's not allowed it. And so Axel has to step up in his stead, and he's been so good on this map, but he is gone. And so it is on Electronic. So cool in these clutches. He's got himself one from behind the box, and this time it's a deep fuse on the mouse side of things. Exertion comes off to swing. He gets rid of Electronic and gets back to that deep fuse. It's tied up all again. That's so massive. There's so much time left in that bomb planet, and Electronic feels like he has to bite on the tap on the Diffuse, and Exertion just knows he's got plenty of time to get off and find that kill. Just barely holding on. And Cloud9 actually won out at a certain point, forcing that long defense to retreat fully back to the corner behind the cube. It actually felt like they would, they got an advantage, but Boomage could never find a better position. Nick goes forward, Hobbit. Ooh. It's going to be Boomich that nearly eats that one, but just about dodges it. And Electronic, he's setting up his team for what looks to be a quick play up this B site. Brolin comes out, spots out Boomich, laying down the law with his AUG. It's not getting anywhere here for Cloud9. They're held back after that first kill. Uh, do they run out of steam? Have they finally run out of steam, Cloud9? Looks like they want to burst through this smoke with so many counter flashes coming in, making it awkward. Oh, perfect for Shuhei. Coming in, there's the smoke blown open. He's got another. Yeah, they nuked the smoke. They reveal multiple players. And Mao's up a couple of members here. Perhaps Cloud9 really have run out of steam, but there's new fuel found. It's Perfecto's kill on Brolin. And he might be able to get a little bit more here. Molly's out towards. He cancels him out for the meantime. And there is obviously a lot of time and space to plant this bomb now. And Electronic is going to confirm those digits down. And Perfecto's looking for fights. You gotta work up courage to move out of the bomb site if you're one of these two. Oh, they guys. line up with each other. They're eclipsing one another. And this could cost them. Oh, it's fumbled. Oh, it's absolutely awkward inside of the site here on Perfecto. This is gonna be so tough. This is gonna be ridiculous. And he can't do it. He can't pull this one off. And it's gonna be Mao suddenly up to map and series point for the first time. Tough situation to be in. And finally, for the first time, Mao's is gonna have series point. They had to force. Overtime, they had to force double overtime and triple overtime. Now they finally have a chance to take it away. Running out of steam, and I, I running mean, out of ideas. They've been stopped here a number of times. I'll say though, this angle from Torji has not been successful throughout this map. 
No, and it won't be this time. He's forced behind that smoke, and Brolin, he'll play from the cubby, swings on out. That's Axel down early. Here goes Brolin again, lining up a double, and Mouse have done it, pushed to the brink multiple times. This team survived. They showed tenacity. Cloud9 came close so many times. Mouse only needed one chance, one opportunity, and they took it. And give so much credit over to Brolin in this third map. When you consider he was having such a slow start to it, a slow series in the first two maps as well, but ever since he lost that 1v1 clutch, ever since then he responded and was instrumental in this victory for Maus. A great first win to it for a team that came into Katowice cold. And this Cloud9 loss is going to be so frustrating. You're going to leave this game today thinking about all those moments, how close you were so many times, and you couldn't get it done. A last second exertion headshot, so many other chances following that, but Cloud9 can't close. And it's Shue that will have a rematch against his old team in Gamer Legion in that upper matchup in the group. And uh, down to the elimination bracket is Cloud9. Yeah, man, Cloud9 not able to close three times. And you think like the losing to the USPs, losing track of exertion in the smoke. There were, I mean, it, it was impressive seeing them bounce back from each and every one of those. But at the end of the day, it all catches up eventually. And when you don't close out on the opportunities you're given, those are going to bite you. And that's what the conversation with Cloud9 is probably going to be later on tonight, is those moments. Yeah, well, Counter-Strike is a beautiful game, and sometimes it's decided by seconds.